the topic at hand. We knew it was going to happen, just didn't know exactly when. But the Jets have traded Darrell Revis to Tampa Bay. He signed to a new six-year deal worth $96 million. But listen to this, no money guaranteed. In return, the Jets get the 13th pick in the upcoming draft and a conditional pick in 2014. So with the facts in hand, who got the better end of the deal, the Jets or the Buccaneers, Skip? Stephen A. Smith, I, I'm so shocked over this that I'm still trying to sort of compute it because I think this is going to go down as an all-time steal for the Tampa Bay Bucks. Because, Stephen A., to me, the Bucks just stole Darrell Revis from the Jets in two ways, in how little they had to pay the Jets for Revis, and then they turned right around in how little they had to pay Revis contractually, as you point out. Am I getting this right? Yeah. Zero guaranteed money for the best cornerback we have seen since Deion Sanders, a guy who has a chance ultimately to be in Deion's sentence or category. Seriously, Stephen A., because I said from the start, I'm fine with trading Revis as long as you can get back a Herschel Walker-style package. And for our younger viewers who don't remember, back in 1989, Jimmy Johnson for Herschel Walker got a treasure chest of players and picks from the Minnesota Vikings. And just on picks alone, that included three firsts, three seconds, a third and a sixth rounder for Herschel Walker, and Jimmy called it the great train robbery. Wait a second. The Jets got only one first round pick, which is the 13th overall pick. Not bad, not great. And a conditional, what will probably turn into one third round. That's all you got? You didn't even get next year's first round pick from Tampa Bay? And then the Bucks turn around because Drills, as we all know, is coming off the ACL reconstruction, though he's, he appears to be right on track, maybe on Adrian Peterson track to be back for game one. You, you do give him $16 million, which is $10 million more than the Jets were going to give him this year, $6 million. But Stephen A., really? No guaranteed money? You're going to give him 16 next year, but this is still a lot of risk for Darrell Reeves coming off knee surgery to go into this deal? I can't believe that he didn't say no. I got to have at least one year's worth of guaranteed salary, just the, the first $16 million. That's all you get? I, I'm going great train robbery for Tampa Bay now. I'm sorry if I can borrow that from you, Jimmy Johnson, but I think it's about to apply. Well, let's put a let, let, let's just you know couch this with a, a bevy of information just to get it out there. First of all, he's really getting 16 million dollars okay. because we know the first year he's going to get the 16 million. He was due to get six, coming off ACL injury and surgery and rehabilitation and all of that other stuff. You essentially got a $10 million raise because you're going to get $10, $6 million in New York. You're getting $16 million for the least season one in Tampa. And, oh, by the way. Okay, but, but what? If, let's do the, the worst-case scenario. What if he hurts his knee again in training camp? And the well, I think, I, I think the understanding is that since you pass that physical, okay. you walk in and you get the $16 million. So in light of I that, hope that's the case. So in the, yeah, yeah, so in light of that reality, you're talking about going from $6 million to $16 million and going from okay. New York to a tax-free state. That, is that helps a little bit. Yeah. That helps a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> because you traded a first rounder and a fourth rounder, which turns into a third rounder in the event that he's on their roster two days in training camp, I believe, next season, you're talking about an additional $16 million. So that's $32 million that De Darrell Reeves is getting. It's like even though it's not guaranteed and it's a bit risque, at the same time, you're talking about $32 million as opposed to, as opposed okay. to six. million. I'm, I'm good with it. Mm -hmm. Here's where I'm trying to be fair to the New York Jets, Skip. I'm trying to be fair from the standpoint that he's coming off of surgery. If you remember, when they signed him to four years of $46 million back a couple of years ago in 2010, it, it stipulated that they couldn't franchise him, you know, coming into his last year. Sure. So as a result, as of June 1st, he was going to count about $9 million against their cap. They weren't going to be in a position where they had but so much leverage because of the Mike Tannenbaum and the way he negotiated things with him back in 2010. So as a result, they were devoid of the kind of leverage you would suspect they would have with somebody the magnitude of a Darrell Revis. So if you're the New York Jets and he's coming off of surgery, I guess the best case scenario would have been to let him play it out, see what he's worth, and then elect to give him his money. I, here's where they lose me, though. Where the Jets lose me, Skip, is if he was willing to accept $16 million, 
non-guaranteed from Tampa. How come he couldn't do it with you? You see what I'm saying? I mean, to me, it just stands. I don't know. I don't understand. Maybe I don't know. I don't know the particulars because I'm I'm at a loss to comprehend why is it that he could go somewhere else, agree to five years, ninety six million, non-guaranteed, where basically they have to make a sixteen million dollar decision. Every offseason about the Rell Revis. Okay. How come the New York Jets couldn't fix it so that would be the case? Now, I'm trying to be... Could it be that he took the Tampa Bay deal just to spite the Jets? Uh, who knows? I don't know. I, I have not spoken to him. I don't know. I've spoken to several members of the New York Jets that suspect that, but I have not spoken to Darrell Revis. What I would tell you is, is that the fact that he's willing to do it with them but wasn't willing to do it with the Jets is an indictable thing to me. Mm -hmm. I recognize the Jets have played, that they paid Mangold, they paid Ferguson, they paid David Harris. You can't accuse Wait, Willie they, Johnson. They, they yeah. paid Sanchez a that's whole right. lot that's and right. San Antonio a right. whole that's lot. That's right, that's right. So you can't accuse Woody Johnson yeah. of being cheap. No. What you can accuse him of, however, is not putting people in place that know what the hell they're doing. Right. Because clearly it seems to be the case when it comes to the New York Jets. I think this is a travesty as far as I'm concerned because the boy is big time. Mm -hmm. He's wide recognizes the, as the best defensive player in football and to lose him essentially because you don't want to pay him 16 million dollars even though i understand you haven't been cheap and woody johnson shouldn't be accused of being cheap when you go out of your way when mark sanchez doesn't have a contract expiring and you extend him and guarantee him over 20 million dollars for two years 11 last year 8.25 this upcoming season even though it's apples and oranges and one may have nothing to do with the other yep. in the eyes of joe public that's money that you could have used elsewhere particularly in keeping somebody sure. who is trial proven and tested now yep. in their conference call yesterday it's zick and rex ryan and woody johnson those boys they essentially intimated that you know what hey he was injured, we weren't sure, and we couldn't take that chance on him. Mm -hmm. But the point is, if anybody was worth the chance, it's Revis. So I'm not going to completely annihilate the Jets on this issue, but it's a sad, sad day, and it's, indict and it's an indictment against the Jets organization that it came down to this, not just because of what you lost him for, but because of what he was willing to leave for mm -hmm. when it appears as if you could have worked something out sure. if you were committed to doing so. Okay. The old poker saying goes, you got to know when to hold them and when to fold them. Right. Because they were at such a loss of leverage on the open market because of his injury and the unknown of it, maybe you, you, you don't fold them. Maybe you don't trade him now. Maybe you wait until his value increases as you can prove to people that he is healthy. He has just been cleared to run. Maybe people needed to see him run a little bit more because I'm shocked that nobody would bid higher on the open market than one first and one third, a middle of the first round yeah. and a third or a 13th. Well, I'm not yeah. shocked by that because I, I'm at a loss to comprehend why is it that you've got guys who have produced significantly <laughs> in this league that get traded for a first round pick and people are raving about it. That's a lot. That's a lot. I'm sitting there like it's a first round pick. There's been plenty of first round busts. How do we know that it was viable? I so I, I often ask myself that question, but according to the NFL pundits, the aficionados who talk about how a first round pick is so valuable, how even a third round pick to some degree is valuable. If you look at a, uh, Darrell Revis coming off of his injury, it seems to make sense. And I don't know if the Jets could be blasted per se for that. I do believe they can be blasted, however, when you look at their pedigree, their history, some of the decisions that they've made, particularly the Mark Sanchez decision. And also, by the way, you have an elite coach yeah. in Rex Ryan on the defensive side of the football. Yeah, this back. is yeah, his this sure. is his man right here. This is the guy yeah. he swore by. Well, listen, look, you wouldn't let him go. You mentioned Rex Ryan. Let's layer this a little bit. Does this help or hurt him? Oh, it hurts Rex Ryan. It, 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 it hurts Rex Ryan because essentially by making this move, you have essentially said if you're the New York Jets, you are in rebuilding mode. If you are in rebuilding mode, that gives every indication that this is in 16. And as a result, Rex Ryan is around because he's guaranteed a couple of years at approximately $6 million on his deal. And Woody Johnson didn't want to pay him and a GM he booted out of the door at the same time he's got to pay a new GM and a new coach. Okay. That seems to be what this is about more so than anything but clearly, else. Woody and Idzik are now betting on Rex's defensive prowess to get them through the night, which is going to be a long okay. night of next yeah. year. And I will point out, Rex is correct. Now, he loves him some Rex. So he said yesterday, we're, we're going to put a good defense on the field even and without Terrell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, guess what? 
after Darrell went down last year, they from that point on they ranked eight in pass defense in the NFL. Which I totally agree, good. and I think defensively, Rex Ryan has proven to be stellar. Mm -hmm. My problem is every time he says things like that, it <laughs> reminds me he's really a defensive coordinator and not a head coach. <laughs> and so as a result of that, once again, Rex Ryan can sit there and bloviate all he wants right. about his defense. But in the end, when we look at the Jets, yeah. whether they're four and twelve, six and six and, and, and ten, eight and eight, we're going to be looking at the head coach. Mm -hmm. And if the head coach has that record, then damn it had a decency to step aside, let somebody else rule the day in terms of a head coach position and get a defensive coordinator's job because he is hired to be the head coach and his offense stunk last year. He is just as accountable for that as he is for the defense. Well, I guess you can say, bottom line, that the pressure is now off Rex a little bit next year. I don't think so. Well, well because even our own Mel Kuyper is saying now the Jets are probably the least talented team in all of pro football. That's his yeah. problem. Wow. That's his problem. Okay. He created the circumstances yeah. because of Rex Ryan, who was very influential in the Mike Tannenbaum era, didn't allow some of those decisions to go down and be made. They wouldn't have been in a position where they would have to boot Darrell Reeves out of the door. Because I guarantee you, if they were in a position to compete for a Super Bowl championship, Woody Johnson would have upped the ante and possibly kept Reeves. That is on Rex Ryan, too. Rex Ryan so is you responsible. Say on him. Rex Ryan is responsible yeah. for the fact that Darrell Reeves is now a Tampa Bay Buccaneer because if he had done his job completely, okay, instead of hold, and instead of throwing the defense to the Wolves, they wouldn't be in this position. It is on Rex Ryan just as much as it is on Mike Tannenbaum. Did Tampa just steal Darrell Reeves? I think so. Yeah. You think so or yes. you know so? I think Darrell so. Reeves says this, I put my body on the line every day and did everything I could to help the <clears> team <throat> win. I experienced a lot and learned a lot. The memories I had in New York, I will keep dearly to my heart. I want to thank all the Jets fans for making me feel welcome. That's his tweet after learning of being traded. And speaking of tweeting, everyone loves to do it. <laughs>